tries to charge too much for its products, its customers will desert it, it'll go bust. If a council does the same, it can simply pass on the costs to the local council taxpayers who have no choice but to pay up. Just two weeks ago, the Cabinet was presented with a proposed budget which included a 2% increase in council tax. This despite the fact that the government was offering a £600,000 grant to Thurrock if we agreed to again to freeze our council tax this year. Mr Mayor, to refuse that freeze grant again and raise council tax would have been the wrong decision. It would have sent a message to Thurrock taxpayers who are themselves having to deal with static wages and rising household bills that the council will look after its own and leave you to pick up the tab. Then, in an announcement which seemed to come as a surprise to everyone from myself, so I suspect even the Council's Finance Department, we were told the Administration had changed their minds and had now decided to accept the freeze grant after all. No one seems quite sure how this came about. Maybe the Leader of the Council had some kind of revelation that fairness has to include fairness to the hard-working local people who pay the bills. Or maybe it was some kind of political survival instinct cutting in. Either way, I do congratulate the Administration over their change of heart on this matter and confirm our wholehearted support for the fact that the thorough share of the council tax will now be frozen this year. Then we come to the matter of the expenditure budget. Just like a household or a business, once we know how much income we expect the council to receive, we can determine how that money will be spent. In previous years, we've spent many hours in scrutiny committees and in the council chamber debating the merits of proposals for increases in some services and cuts to others. Sometimes we become involved in detail to the point of distraction. I clearly remember a long and hard fought debate as to whether the council should continue to lock local parks at night, a service which costs less than £10,000 a year. At less than 0.01% of the council's annual budget, we would perhaps have been justified in saying, just get on with it. But it does show how seriously take, uh, balancing the books was being taken. But not this year. Instead of a detailed set of proposals, we've been presented with a cursory couple of pages which basically amounts to do the same as last year and hope it works out. And in fact, Councillor Kent has just given far more detail in the speech he's just given us than the actual recommendations and the actual documents we're being asked to vote on tonight. But even worse, the proposed budget does not balance. On page 129, it clearly shows that the budget will be financed in part by taking £2.4 million pounds out of reserves just to keep day-to-day -day services running. And it's been suggested that instead of offering a plan for how this shortfall will be made up, we should leave it to officers to try and come up with something in year. Mr Mayor, the lack of political leadership this shows is breathtaking. The administration has tonight invited us to consider and vote on the price of a sausage sandwich, but expects us to gloss over a £2.4 million pound hole in the budget with a vague trust as it will be okay. And for the record, that amounts to 519,518 and a half sausage sandwiches. Something which even the stalwart staff of the Culver Centre Canteen would struggle to serve up. Using reserves in year is sometimes necessary. That's why we have them. And in fact, over £2 million intended to go into future reserves was actually used to prop up overspends in last year's budget. But to start the year, planning to depend on reserves, even before the in-year pressures have happened, is reckless and it's wrong. And it's also cowardly. To, to list it out in full would reveal the extent to which the council is living beyond its means, and to identify exactly where those savings are going to be made, and we're saying they will have to be made this year, would require tough decisions and political courage. The administration would have to face the hard truth that its social care model is not financially sustainable, its centralised education function no longer fits the modern world of academies and free schools, and its approach to managing leisure and cultural facilities is driven by nostalgia rather than good business sense. But rather than risk a few challenging headlines and negative election leaflets, this administration has tried to gloss over the problem and pretend that the savings don't have to be made or that deciding where to make them is somebody else's responsibility. Deciding on those £2.4 million pounds of savings is not officers' responsibility, it's yours. If you don't want to shoulder it, then the answer is simple. Stand down and we'll do it for you. <laughs> Residents of Thurrock know what needs to be done with public finances. They know that the work isn't finished yet, and although no one likes having to live with yet less, they know who they can trust to get the job done, and that's the Conservative Party. <laughs> Mr Mayor, we have repeatedly called for this council to adopt the rigorous discipline of zero-based budgeting. Instead, we've been offered zero-detail budgeting, 
zero courage budgeting, and zero responsibility budgeting. I'm confident that accepting the government's freeze grant gives us the right financial footing to set a budget for 2014-15. I have no confidence the proposals before us tonight about <coughs> expenditure are the best way to manage that budget, and no confidence in this administration's ability either to deliver it or to make the £2.4 million of further savings that they've tried to bury in the detail. On that basis, we will, of course, be supporting the council tax freeze and the statutory resolutions that throw out of it. But we cannot support the detail of the expenditure budget that goes with it. Um, I'd also hope that we might be able to reach consensus on the enabling um, motions for Gloriana. But um, 1.7e, um, again, delegates to the Cabinet the ability to agree that advances to Gloriana be considered as part of the General Fund Capital Programme. Again, I would have asked that that's been deferred. Um, it doesn't seem that it has been. So again, I would move that uh, we change that recommendation to say the ability to agree that advances to um, the advance to Gloria Arts as part of the Capital Fund um, programme be deferred until a full debate on Gloria has taken place.